my voice, I feel even more nervous when I'm holding something in my hand when I speak in public. So if you can't really hear me, just you know, wave your hand and I'll increase my volume. So my name is Kao Wei Wong, and I teach at the English Language Center at Hong Kong. And okay, so in order for us to understand me as a growing professional, because today's topic is professional growth, you need to know what I was before I joined Hong Kong. So I started teaching immigrant uh, survival English uh, here in the U.S. and I. I did that for eight years um, before I decided to get my MA in teaching university English. Um, and after I got my MA, I did eight years of um, literature and also freshman composition and first year composition uh, classes. So I, ne I never really did Huckleberry, Huckleberry Finn because of the N word, so don't worry. Um, so before I came to Hong Kong, I would say that only about 30% of the students that I used to teach in the U.S. were uh, second language speakers, and I taught mostly, um, after I finished teaching uh, adult immigrants, I taught mostly uh, first language speakers um, in literature and also in composition. So, so that's that. And so most of my expertise come from uh, ESL uh, case study. So fast forward, forward to now, okay, I teach, as I said, at the English English Center, okay, at PolyU, and okay, most of my classes are academic English classes, as okay, many of the speakers mentioned, it's a very different setting from okay, the uh, literature first and composition classroom. And more than that, I taught mostly the uh, school of design classes as well. Okay, so now most of the classes I'm in the EFL setting and also in the English setting. So today's um, focus is how I've grown as a professional from making that transition from uh, being a literacy EFL person to an EAP person. Okay, so um, so my expertise is in writing, uh, big picture writing. I use a lot of technology in my classroom to um, foster collaboration among the students, and also uh, okay, to help them do peer review and give instant feedback uh, okay, using Google Docs. Okay? So I recognize that it's very similar to what someone had done uh, okay, in the last talk, but it's a little different. Okay? So the lesson that I taught was essay writing. Uh, and they, the class was broken into four groups, and each group had to write uh, a body paragraph using uh, an authentic source, an authentic source um, uh, and then they have to give each other peer review. So two groups would be paired, and then the other two groups are also paired, and then they would peer review each other's product at the end of the activity. Uh, okay. And as I said, I use uh, a Google Doc. Um, so this is the authentic text, uh, okay. and that's the instruction for the text. It says, using the following excerpt, Write a body, body paragraph that uses the following information. Be sure to organize the paragraph so that there is a claim that's supported by details and examples. Also, make sure that you connect the paragraph to the main theme of the essay, which is water issues in China. So in the US, that kind of instruction uh, okay, in my classroom would suffice uh, because most of the students, as I mentioned, are uh, first language speakers. And to them, that is um, comprehensible information. Uh, even though it's very dense and the sentence structure is very long. Okay. And so they had to read this um, excerpt from an academic, academic uh, journal article and they had to write a body paragraph based on this source. Okay. Okay. So this is what they came up with. Uh, okay. It was about water issues and it says one of the reasons that causes water pollution is the unsuitable treatment of urban sewage in China, more than 20 billion tons. Uh, all that. And at the end, they have to, as I said, peer review each other's um, paragraphs. Okay? So this, I didn't really ask them to write on the uh, Google Docs, but from memory, I remember that the comments are very general. It's like overall good, very clear, and you know, use citation. But if you really look at the product, it's actually 
very, very basic and very surface. Uh, okay. And the assessment is that they have to use um, an academic <coughs> journal article to write an in-class essay that's timed in the um, first assessment. So clearly, it didn't really work as well as it should, right? Even though on paper, students were supposed to interact, they're supposed to do peer review, and it's instantaneous, I was able to give feedback. So this is, I think this happened on Tuesday. So I went back to my office and I thought about what didn't really work about the activity. And as I said earlier, the input was just too much and the instructions were uh, it itself a reading activity because it's just so much. Okay. So I started thinking, I said, well, maybe if I actually broke it down into different questions, okay, and ask them very direct questions. Okay, so ask them things that they could just do very uh, easily. What's the main point presented in the paragraph? What specifics are mentioned to describe the issue? How does it relate to the causes of water pollution? And of course, what does it all mean and apply? Because if you actually looked at the what the student wrote, um, the Tuesday group student wrote, it actually didn't touch upon the last point in here. Okay. And you can see that uh, okay, it's the same instructions, but the uh, end product was a lot more precise and a lot more meaningful. And, and it's a lot more detailed and meaningful. Uh, and the peer reviewer, instead of just asking them to comment on each other's uh, key products, I asked them to identify the things that were in the questions themselves, and they were able to do that. And as a result, the peer review was more to the point, more critical, and more helpful. So um, it's not really what I'm sharing as expertise, uh, okay, but it's the experience of me transitioning from one setting to another. And I really learned that I have to make my input with more scaffolding, more digestible, and to ask more direct questions. And it really brings to mind the differences between EFL and ESL. Um, so the dominant language is different, and exposure and purpose is very all different. Okay, thank you very much.